Hi everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. Welcome to episode, I don't know what, of Royals at the Ranch, which is airing on Thursday, January 13th, 2022. I have been doing a weekly episode of Royals at the Ranch since earlier last year in 2021, and I was keeping track of each episode and telling you this is episode number one and number five, etc. And now I don't know what episode we're up to. So if any of the viewers can figure that out, let me know and I'll start announcing that again. In this episode, you're going to get to meet one of our royals at the ranch that you haven't officially met yet. His name is Barkley, named after Reginald Barkley from Star Trek The Next Generation. You're going to get to see just briefly a glimpse of the day that I picked him up. The weather was extremely horrible. We had severe high winds. We had damage all over Colorado Springs and the region. When I was driving to get Barkley, something hit my windshield and cracked it like a piece of wood from a construction site flew into my van windshield. So it wasn't a great day. And when I got to the loaf and jug where I was meeting the local breeder to pick Barkley up, they had no electricity. The power was out. There was wind damage there. So it was quite a harrowing day, but I got Barkley safely home. And then I didn't see Barkley for, I don't know, several days, really. He spent in a paper towel roll. And then he started moving between his paper towel roll and his hide. And then at about the two week mark, he started spending time out in his quarantine tub. And I was able to move him into a regular enclosure where I could start more active habituation. And you're gonna get to see where Barkley's at with his habituation and training now. And then we're going to see our Royals at the Ranch, Royals in Your Home segment. And after that, we're going to just get right into feeding some of our royals. So you can see some of the royals that you haven't seen doing their target training and eating yet. And then our behavior break this time, instead of being sort of a classroom setting, is just going to be focused around one snake, Mesmer. And he is our one royal at the ranch that is extremely, extremely fearful and reactive. And I'm lucky when I can just get him to get his head out of hiding. It's quite extreme. And so he's one of the royals that's challenging me. And I'm sorry if you have one like that as a pet, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we're gonna get to see some of our other royals training and we'll end the episode with that. Here I am leaving Colorado Springs just about one block before something struck my windshield and cracked that right side. It happened at the next intersection. I made it the two hour drive to Bailey, Colorado and met the breeder at that loaf and jug and picked Barkley up. This is his second night here. He actually did eat, but he took the food and pulled it into the paper towel roll with him as he ate. I didn't see him come out of the paper towel roll for about five days. And when the breeder met me and asked me if I wanted to see Barkley, he handed him to me in the parking lot out of the snake bag and Barkley struck at me immediately. And I put him in the snake bag and just got him home. At about day five or six, he started spending time between his hide and his paper towel roll. But if I came into the room at all, he would immediately go into hiding. And then he started staying out more and more until I felt comfortable moving him to this PVC enclosure. And we're flashing forward now where obviously he's comfortable in my presence. He's comfortable with my proximity. He's actually comfortable in his enclosure and out of his enclosure and exploring the room. Barkley is a pinstripe. And I think he's absolutely beautiful. His golden color just shines and shimmers. And it's really quite a unique set of markings that he has. It's, I'm told, a dominant um, trait. So if you breed a pinstripe to another royal or to another pinstripe, you get more pinstripes. And I just think he's absolutely beautiful. 
And after we got past those initial first weeks of him settling in, he's become quite outgoing, and I'm really pleased with him. So we're flashing forward to this week. It's our Royals at the Ranch time, and I'm filming on Wednesday a feeding session and target training session with Barkley. And as you can see, he understands what the target means. He came out of his hide when I presented the target, and he's coming out of his enclosure following the target. He also comes out of his enclosure just on his own. Sometimes he comes to the door and just wants out of the enclosure. And I let him out if I'm able when he wants to do that because I try to encourage that confidence and his um, exercise and exploration. So he's doing really well and you're going to get to see more of him in the future. This is Pavlova. She is a blackhead and she's about six months old. For some reason, she was crouched at the back of her enclosure. So I thought this was a good opportunity for her to practice targeting out of hiding. Not really sure why she was back there. She's usually very outgoing and at her door and she comes out pretty often on her own. I noticed that the branch you see in the upper right hand corner had fallen down and Maybe it scared her, maybe it even fell on her, I'm not sure, but I decided I'd take the opportunity to see if I could target her from where she was in her enclosure up towards the front of her enclosure, and she responded really well. I don't know if you noticed, when I first stuck the target in there, she didn't move at all, and you could really tell immediately when she noticed the target and started responding to it, and I'm going to show you that again right here. When I first stick the target in there, she doesn't respond at all. So I don't know if she was asleep or in a daze or what, but watch right here. You will see that she suddenly notices the target and you can see her body language immediately respond to it once she realizes it's there. And that's the subtle type of body language that you need to be observant of when you're doing this type of training. I don't know that I've shown this in other videos, so I thought I would take this opportunity to show you that I do clean the targets and the feeding tongs in between training sessions with each snake. I use these rescue wipes, which are recommended by our exotic veterinarian, and they contain a concentrated hydrogen peroxide solution. And the contact time to clean and disinfect with this particular chemical is only 30 seconds and it also does come in a liquid which you can get in a gallon jug. It doesn't have any smell or scent so it generally does not bother the animals and it works very well. Our veterinarian recommends it for cleaning all surfaces so we use it here. This is a training session which is going to be in lieu of our behavior break and that's because this particular snake mesmer is extremely fearful, extremely reactive, and has generalized fear and anxiety living here in our home, unfortunately. He arrived when he was, I believe, about eight months old, and he had lived his whole life until then in Iraq with no socialization or handling. And not every snake that arrives here from those conditions is as fearful and reactive as Mesmer is. I don't know if he had any aversive experiences prior to arrival. I'm wondering if he did because of his generalized fear and anxiety. He just is generally fearful and anxious in all of the environments that he's in. He seldom comes out of his hide. When he's hungry, he starts to stick just his head out of his hide. He has learned the target training 
and he will come towards the target. It's very hard to see in this video and I would have to blow it up, but he is slightly, ever so slowly moving his body just by the millimeter further out of his hide and towards the target. I didn't really expect him to traverse this distance across his enclosure. This is a huge change in my expectations from our last training session where the target was much closer. I wanted an opportunity for you to see him and to talk to you a little bit about his general reactivity, fearfulness, and anxiety, which I suspect is the result of prior experiences with humans that had negative emotional valence for him because it's not usual for animals to arrive with this much reactivity, generalized anxiety, and fear towards any interaction with people whatsoever. And he's been here 10 months and if you've watched our channel at all, you know how careful we are about handling our snakes and using gradual desensitization and the least intrusive, minimally aversive methods possible. And any slight interaction I've initiated with him has resulted in him striking, um, freezing, stiffening his body, and flying, propelling himself in the opposite direction of where we're interacting. And he has flung himself into his water bowl, flung himself onto the floor. It's quite severe. And so what I'm gonna do now is just repeat that last few seconds of that video where I moved the target. And I want you to watch how he does change his orientation when I change the position of the target. So he absolutely is acknowledging the target and following the target, which is a plus. And so we're gonna just keep working with that. And now I'm done with Mesmer's training session. I'm going to clean his target and I'm gonna clean the feeding tongs again. I say his target, I use this target for lots of different snakes. So it's very important to clean it in between sessions. I just wanted to show you this a second time to reiterate that I do clean the equipment in between snakes and I don't scent the targets, but you certainly could scent the targets with the scent of prey or something else. I don't. This is Phoenix. She is the snake that we recently got from Canova Reptiles. I was asked how she's doing, and as you can see here, she's doing fantastic. This is just her third target training session with us. And she definitely orients towards the target and then starts looking for that reinforcement immediately. So she is doing really well. This is Romana. She lives right above Phoenix. And she seemed kind of lazy to me during this training session. She was comfy up there on that net and she really didn't seem like she wanted to come down. And that's fine. She's still oriented towards the target. So she gets reinforced for that. She's normally a lot more outgoing than this, and she comes out of her enclosure a lot and uses the exercise space adjacent to it. She might have just been tired tonight. This is Kenobi, and this illustrates the point that I've made before that you really need to give the snakes time to perceive the target and think about what's happening and remember what they're supposed to do in order to earn the reinforcement. He was partially up on this ledge and partially hanging down in this foliage. And he saw the target and oriented towards it, but then you see that as soon as he realizes what's happening, he moves towards it quite confidently and then takes his reinforcement. Good job. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. This is one of our inlands at the ranch. And while I was filming the intro, I forgot he was out on this activity stand next to me. And he was almost to my shoulder when I realized that he was still out after being out for an exercise session. And then he ate. And so it's time to put him up and it's time to close out this episode. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.